International Geographic Research and Production presents The Amazing Secrets of Cambodian Cuisine. Again, we are in the remote country of Cambodia. In the first installment of our film, we spoke about what constitutes the basis of the native Khmer's diet. Different soups, rice and soy dishes, fish and various sea products go hand in hand with uncommon and even exotic food. Cakes from rice flour, palm tree beer, sugar cane juice. Those are though uncommon products, but at least they are pleasant to the taste. What one would not say about fried spiders or water tigers. Everyone has heard of turtle soup. However, not everybody has tried fried turtles. Probably you will not find many Europeans who would wish to try fried bedbugs, even taking into consideration that they live in the water. Cambodians, on the other hand, won't be stopped by this fact. They do not discriminate the food they eat. There are at least two explanations for this fact. First of all, the low standard of living in this country. And secondly, the reason why Cambodians eat such exotic food is in traditions that were developed over hundreds of years under specific natural and climatic conditions. Consequently, Russian honey, cedar nuts, and cloud berries would not appear to be tasty for Cambodians. On the market of Phnom Penh, alongside the food sections, there are sections with different items and attributes that are used by healers. Dried toads are used as a remedy for the common cold and the flu, and are also used in magic rituals. Sea stars, horseshoe crabs, one of the most ancient creatures on the planet, everything is up for sale. However, the biggest section here is delegated to snakes. Dried snakes are used here for increasing a person's personal protection and life force. Moreover, they serve as a charm from the cobra's bite. Usually, the potion is made from many different ingredients, besides snakes, dried lizards, toads, and cuckoos. Other items are used. Dried powder called kukang, fat lori, is used to relieve bone pains. It is prepared from little lemurs that can be encountered in the nearby forests. From the gecko lizard, Cambodians prepare a lot of various medicines. They are used to cure heart illnesses, skin irritations, and stomach aches. Very often, you can find dried pythons here. All of the python's organs can be used for medical purposes. The inner organs are considered to have the best cure effect. The python's head is used in many different magic rituals. Each kilo of python costs around five, six dollars. This one was offered to us for three hundred dollars. At the same time, Python's fillet costs less than one dollar per kilo. This can be explained by the fact that the most expensive parts are the heart, liver, and gallbladder. Python's meat is considered to be a secondary product.
Various drinks prepared from snakes and alcohol are very popular among native Cambodians. They are quite easily prepared. Several serpents are used, mainly cobras. Roots and spices are added, and finally alcohol is poured into the mix. After several days, the drink is ready. After consuming a couple of glasses, Cambodians usually top the container off by adding water, so that after some time, the drink becomes practically non-alcoholic. Cambodians find it very pleasant to relax on a quiet summer evening, sipping snake potion in the company of good friends. The sale of serpents is illegal in Cambodia. However, for many people, it is the only way to make ends meet. In a small town in the south of the country, we got acquainted with a man whose name was Rama. His friends call him Ra. Rama's profession is catching snakes. That day, Rama's bag was not very full. He had sold only one python. The money he got was sufficient to buy enough rice to last his family a whole month. Cobras cost much more than pythons. However, they are harder to encounter and exercising caution while handling them is highly recommended. Being a snake charmer is a dangerous profession, though quite profitable in terms of money. The next day, early in the morning, we went along with Rama on a snake hunt. The hunt started on the shores of the Kampon Sao River. During the dry season, a lot of snakes come here in order to sun themselves on the stones and search for food. This time, one particular python was not so lucky. He ended up in the hunter's bag. Catching a python does not require any special skills. It is not poisonous, although a python's teeth are very sharp, and the process of handling it should be performed with caution. A snake catcher's equipment is quite simple a medium-sized wicker basket with a strong latch, and a stick with a bayonet knife taken from an AK-47 attached. The assault rifle itself is stored at Ra's house in order to defend his family from unwanted guests. Cambodians have a lot of superstitions and legends that are connected with serpents. For example, there is a story about the ancient Khmer king, Katbu, who was forced to live with a snake-like princess, the daughter of the great Nag, the ruler of serpents. Stories told by native farmers are no less exciting, like the story about a snake tree that can be encountered in local forests. 
once this creature had caught a jeep with four red canaries who were on an assignment. The next victim of the snake catcher was a water snake. It lives and hunts only in water. The snake spotted the hunter and tried to escape, but did not quite manage it. Rama is an experienced hunter, and his livelihood and the livelihood of his family depends upon his skills. The water snake is not very dangerous, however, certain caution should be exercised. It managed to bite Ra's finger. This was quite painful, but not very dangerous. The poisonous teeth are located in the back of the water snake's mouth. Rama, using his many years of experience, found some sort of medicinal grass, put it on his finger, and after a short time, there was no sign left from the bite. Danger always surrounds the hunter, but so do various healing grasses. You just have to find what you need and know how to use it. The next hunting spot Rama chose was a neglected sand pit. There are a lot of Indian cobras here. These are smaller than the king cobras, which the Khmers do not hunt. When they see a king cobra, they feel a mystical sense of horror. That is why the Indian cobra is the main target for snake catchers. They are caught in such large quantities that the government issued a law that restricts the hunting of these snakes. The law is the law. However, people have to survive too. After a cobra is caught, its head is wrapped with grass, so that later, a hunter could pick it out of the basket without running the risk of being bitten. The working day of the hunter is finished. The hunt was successful, and now Ra is not only able to buy rice, but also, who knows, to save enough money and to make the wish of every Cambodian come true, to buy himself a motorcycle.
Ra sold his cobra to the owner of a small restaurant in a suburb of Phnom Penh. The law prohibits cooking snakes as well as hunting them. However, people managed to get around this law because this is a very profitable business. During the month, the owner of the restaurant sells 30 to 40 cobras to a wholesale buyer in Singapore. The cost of one kilo is about $30. In the evening, we decided to try a dish prepared from a cobra. The owner himself picked out the most appetizing one to be cooked for us. He tied the cobra's jaws with a rope, security above all else. Some of the specific Cambodian dishes are not to everybody's taste, as we mentioned before, and looking at the process of cooking is not for the light of heart. That is why we leave these scenes without commentary. The snake's blood is mixed with alcohol and is used as an energy tonic and as a medicine that is supposed to make you younger. A cobra's bile is very good for curing various illnesses, and it is quite expensive, $15 for a kilo. The snake's poison is poured from the snake's head into a glass half filled with alcohol. Biochemists state that when mixed with alcohol, the poison loses its lethal toxicity. Natives enjoy this drink and use it as an aphrodisiac. Eating a snake's live heart is believed to prolong your life. That seems to be true. The owner of the restaurant is 63 years old and his youngest son is only three. 
He also has a house full of wives who are also waitresses in his restaurant. The son of the owner was cleaning the snake as if it was a common fish. Our expert decided to taste the snake's gallbladder. After that, he said that it did not taste very good, and in order to get positive results, you have to eat it regularly. River eels are used to prepare a garnish for the dish. The snake is cut into pieces and it is then boiled in water for about 20 minutes. The leftover innards and the snake's fat are also put into the same saucepan. Simultaneously, a vegetable garnish is being prepared. This big pitcher stores drinking water. After the snake had been boiled for the right amount of time, it is taken out of the pan and mixed with nut sauce. Along with this, a salad from banana flour and fresh vegetables is prepared. This dish costs quite a lot of money, even by European standards. The food only, not taking into account the drinks, cost $60. And in Chinatown in Phnom Penh, one dish from a king cobra can cost up to $400. <laughs> We spent the remainder of the evening at a table on the veranda. We have to admit that we did not understand the Khmer's soul completely. It remained a mystery to us. However, we grew to like this simple and hardworking people. Maybe the reason for that was our venture into Cambodian cuisine, after which we felt like Khmer's ourselves. The snake dinner was completed with a Cambodian Bloody Mary, local alcohol, mixed with snake's blood. <laughs>